Day two of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Russians overnight destroying parts of several cities. This morning, the president of Ukraine is pleading for help. Atika Schubert is live in the western city of Lviv in Ukraine this morning. Atika, there are growing concerns the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv could fall. What can you tell us about this? Well, it's changing minute by minute. What we know now is that Russian reconnaissance troops have entered the northern district of the city uh, and that Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian personnel are now seen taking defensive positions in the streets of Kyiv. It's clear that the objective of the Russian offensive is to encircle the city and topple the government. It's gotten to the point that the Ukrainian defense minister has put out a tweet asking residents in the area to, quote, Take, make Molotov cocktails and take on the oppressors. So it really is getting very dangerous, very chaotic in the capital city of Kiev already. Several people have died when uh, their residential apartment was shelled. So civilians are also getting caught up in the fighting. Here in Lviv, where it's much calmer, there have been a series of air raid sirens this morning. We do know that some targets outside of Lviv have been hit, especially an airfield a short distance away from here. And this is where many people are fleeing to. Tens of thousands are expected to arrive here as they try and flee the fighting in their cities. We've seen so many images that have gripped us, um, those images of those cars that are trying to get out of Kyiv, those people who are hunkered down in the subway station in the capital city of Kyiv. Uh, you mentioned that there are many people who are fleeing to your area right now. Do they get the sense that there's a massive refugee crisis that is imminent in these parts? I think it's inevitable. We're already starting to see uh, people leaving here as well. If you go out on the streets now, you'll see people dragging their suitcases, bags packed. The camping store was packed with people trying to get whatever supplies they could. At the train station, people are arriving from all over the country, but even the trains have in many places stopped. And so people are just getting in any way they can by car to get out of here. A lot of people are going to Poland, trying to cross the border there. And there are embassies there stationing staff so that they can try and get their citizens out as well. Um, I think the reality of it here is that people are very nervous and they're scared. Mm -hmm. You know, one interesting thing, though, about all these people that are leaving, uh, young men between the ages of 18 to 60 are not allowed to leave. They're expected to be called up uh, and help defend the country. And I met a group of men today. They were actually veterans of the fighting in eastern Ukraine in 2014, and they were going to register with the army. They said they had come to fight um, and that they had never expected to put on the uniform and be called to the front line again, but they were willing to do it. Um, so it's, it's a very grim situation that Ukraine is facing now. And it will not get any better anytime soon. Get a sense that there will be a firefight yeah. in the streets of many of these cities in the weeks and months ahead. Atika Schubert, thank you so much. Yeah.